In our last video, we explored Tunisia inland, experiencing a whole new culture in the Sahara Desert. In this video, we visit the famous Hammamet Medina and do some well-needed provisioning at an amazing out-of-the-way local market. things to do when you're in a foreign country is obviously communicate and most of the time we get by with using hand signals and that seems to be okay. Um, Google Translate seems to be a really great thing too but um, it's really good when you go to a country and you find somebody who speaks your language and they can speak the local dialect. G'day mate. How are you mate? Right. Very good thank you. Is this on video? No, 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 this is <laughs> uh, well, well, actually, oh, the record button's on. This is, this is Peter, and Peter's our, um, you're a expat Brit, aren't you? I certainly am. Yeah, and he's um, been here for how long? A long time, 28 years. 28 years, wow. And where are we going today? We're going to uh, a small little sleepy village called Bufisha. However, it wakes up one morning every week, Saturday morning, because that is the weekly farmer's market. Locally the place is known as Souk Sebat. Souk being the Arabic word for market, Sebat being the Arabic word for Saturday. And we're going to see if we can get some uh, good fruit and veg. And have a good look around. <laughs> Pomegranate. Roman. So all this potatoes are uh, potato. <laughs> potato, potato. No, not um, spoons. This is a rubbed-up scenario. A bunch of okay. carrots, basically. Four. Certain parts of the country, you'll see them all on the roof, yeah. drying out. They put them on the roof of the house, drying out. Yes. That's it. Thank you. Yeah. Let's see.
These three boys came up to me and introduced themselves in English. I got a real kick out of it. Not only is there a huge variety of things to buy at this market, but Tunisians love to barter. And Peter showed us how it's done. Um, duvet type thing, but night, because you don't need a heavy one here, with matching sheets and pillowcases. Yeah. Right? And he started off at 120 dinars. And yeah, it's not, not for here. So I said to him, you must be joking. Da, 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 da. Anyway, to cut a long story short, the young, when I said, he said, how much do you want to pay? I said 40, which is when he let me go. And the young lad yeah. came out. Well, to cut a long story short, the young lad went down to 50 in the end. Oh, and I wow. wouldn't move from 40. Wow. So now, next week I can come, and I already know it's down to 50. <laughs> We're now just coming up to a main road, and the road is called the Avenue Happy Boogieba. Happy Boogieba was the president of Tunisia who gained independence from France in 1956. He was North Africa's version of Nelson Mandela, if you like. OK, where are we going now, Peter? We're going into the town centre of Hammamet, or as the locals would say, Santerville. Um, is where tourism started in Tunisia. It started here in 1958. That's two years after the revolution. We're actually going to the Medina. The Medina is the old walled city, which dates back to the 9th century. There is a fort there as well, which uh, dates back to the 15th century. And Medinas in most towns and cities um, is where they were built for the normal Tunisian people to live. Hello. And uh, the Medina in Hammamet still has families that have lived in there all, all their lives, um, but there are also many souvenir shops as well. The Medina. The streets are very, very narrow in the Medina. One of the reasons for this is because of the temperatures which we have in uh, Tunisia. Um, 45 degrees very easily. Narrow streets create lots of shade mm -hmm. but they also create like a wind tunnel effect. So the slightest breeze, and we have a lovely breeze normally in Hammamet, the slightest breeze, it goes through and it gives what Tunisia would they call it colour. <laughs> Some of these walls in the Medina are about one metre thick. Wow. Is that for the, to keep the heat out? Basically, yeah. Um, mm. A real Medina home is so cool in the summer without air conditioning, it's unbelievable. Mm. But also, of course, you go in there in the winter mm. and it gets cold here in the winter, which you'll find out. Um, they stay nice and warm. Yeah. These are the tweezers for the charcoal, which is called Wella. Mm -hmm. So when you're in a coffee shop, you'll hear somebody Wella, but he's calling the man to bring out the plugs in there. You put the dishes here, the water. Mm -hmm. water. Yeah. And that is a shisha pipe. I find that uh, what the Tunisians do, uh, the older men, they'll go into a coffee shop and they'll play cards. Well, for, to play cards, you need two hands. And they have the art of putting that pipe under their armpit, yeah. and it will rest just here, and then... 
Yeah, if we think it's free, take what you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And a comedian too. Yeah, nice, smiling. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> with the, uh, the wrought iron on the window. Some of them are, are flat, like this, um, and some of them are bulbous, and I said is the reason for the bulbous ones, so you can put plants and that sort of thing. Um, and quite a few Tunisian men have told me, no, it's actually because we're quite nosy, we like to see what's going on down the street. And if you have one that's flush like this, you can't look. <laughs> well, mm. some years ago, a home in here changed hands for a million euro. Wow. It's one of the ones overlooking the sea with a splash pool on the roof as well. Mm. And that, so it's gone from being sort of cheap housing, if you like, yeah. into mm. very much in vogue. Yeah. Mm. While having a coffee and mint tea, we noticed the pirate ship, and in the distance, Port Yasmin. Arabic for bird 